Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream. With superior armies comes superior weapons. How has innovation mechanized the battlefield? From bullets to battleships and everything in between, it's machinery of warfare. Plus... From the gross Ew. to the gourmet, mm. see how that in-flight meal lands on your tray table. On secrets of your airline food, it's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit curiositystream.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. That's news under the hour from KISW in Seattle. 50 years of KISW. Lord Bergamot! Oh, Lord Bergamot! KISW. Smash your trash. Join us for Seattle Rock Day. Fresh Jam, KISW. 99.9. KISW! KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. A radio.com station starring BJ and Mix. Mornings. Because, hey, at least once a day, you should experience a BJ. You know, I'm ready for my BJ. Now you're 9.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. We got the gear, man. It's our 50th anniversary. And uh, matter of fact, uh, Steve's rocking something yeah. right now as we speak. Check me out. I got the 50 KSW shirt on. Feels yep. good. It's comfortable. And technically, it's not a black shirt. So suck it, wife. Wow. She always gives me a hard time. She's like, every day you wear, go to work wearing a black shirt. This is more charcoal. Yeah. That's Very it. dark charcoal. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, uh, there's a lot of great reasons to get the 50th anniversary gear in the rock shop, but I think the more important reason is to say, suck it, wife. Suck it, that, wife. Yeah. I mean, knit hats, trucker caps, short sleeve sleeve tees, light zip hoodies, and the opportunity to tell thy wife to suck it. Cannot confirm uh, or deny that's a good idea. Yeah. So uh, celebrate with us, man. Celebrate KISW's 50th anniversary. Go to the rock shop. Get one of these cool pieces of merch or more at KISW.com. Let's play B. Time to pump it up for Monday. Pump it up. Gotta pump it up. Yeah, get all pumped up for the week or the week. Yeah, not the weekend. Yeah, you. Know. Oh, I almost said the weekend. I'm really already hoping. Don't mess with us like that. <laughs> I know. Sorry, everyone. It's Monday. Uh, let's get to our contestant today. We've got Jeff in Puyallup. Jeff, are you there? Yeah, buddy. All right. All right, Steve. Get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Jeff will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Jeff, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yeah, and I don't know if Danny's around, but I'd like to dedicate today's win to Danny V. Oh, that's very uh, sweet of you. Yeah, he's still back in New Mexico. Uh, you know, his, his grandfather <laughs> passed away. So, uh, yeah, we'll let oh, him no. know. I mean, it sounds like he's listening, I'm sure. So, yeah. all right. I like that all for right. Danny V. All right. What character did Mark Paul Gossler play on Saved by the Bell? Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, not Screech. I, I'll come back to it. Do you want to pass? Pass, pass, pass. What year in the mid-2010s did the first Deadpool movie come out? 2014-15. No, no. 2016. Yes, Hugh Hefner's customized plane was called Big What? Oh, man. Mm. Big jug. No. Ah. Nice. Which movie studio has a roaring lion as its logo? MGM. Yes. What type of insect is a firefly? 
Um, uh, B. No. Uh, mosquito. No. Bird. No. Patrick Stewart was born <laughs> July 13th, 1940. How old is he today? He is 81. No. Say 1940. He's uh, July 13th, 1940. Yes, he's 80. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And yes. Jeff, yes. you get um uh, three correct. Yes. Oh, oh man. Hopefully that's enough. Well, uh, 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 it possibly uh, could. I mean, it, it's Monday. Case of the Mondays. Yeah, I don't think it's good. Yeah, I don't think so either. But I mean, again, look who it is. Look who's look who's look who just walks in with swagger. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. swag, 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 yeah, There he is. Swag, swag, this is swag, Mick swag. Jagger without the swagger. There That's he is. Right. <laughs> Are you? Wow. Make no swagger. <laughs> okay, yeah, that works. Are you ready? I have a shout out. I would Ooh. like to dedicate today's game to a certain person. Mm. Oh, wow. I want to give a shout out to Suzanne Ackerman. Yes. Who, by the grace of God, decided to deliver us and drop off Krispy Kreme donuts By this morning. By the grace of... Oh, she's awesome. I, Suzanne's one of those. She, she's awesome. And she likes to game once in a while. She's she's the real deal. Give her a shout. Absolutely. Well, hell yeah. Thank you for the donuts. Although the ref stole the one I wanted. I know. I know. The got pink the pink one. one, man. That's how he does. First off, I didn't realize you loved pink so much. Oh, I'm all about the pink. Bye. Huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, should okay. we just get uh, g- 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 okay, going Steven on with Tyler. the Okay, Steven Tyler. Steve, are you ready? Oh, yeah! What character did Mark Paul Gosler play on Saved by the Bell? Zach. Yes. What year in the mid-2010s Zach did the first Deadpool movie come out? 2011. Ooh. No. 2012. No. 2010. No. no. Hugh Hefner's customized plane was called Big What? Ums? No. <laughs> Willie? No. Hoot? No. Which movie studio has a roaring uh, lion as its logo? MGM. Yes. What type of insect is a firefly? It, it's a uh, rachnid. No. Um, a, a marsupial. No. That's it. A fly. Uh, no. Patrick Stewart was born July 13th, 1940. How old is he today? I'm 80. Yes. In what Whoa, state is yeah. the Coachella Festival held? Indio, California, California. Yes. What is the tube that carries food into the stomach called? The esophagus. Yes. Venera 9 was the first probe to land on what planet? Mars. No. Uranus. No. Uh, Neptune. No. What species of whale is known for singing long, complex songs? Sperm whale. No. Um, blue whale. No. One, two, three, singing four, whale. five. It is a singing whale. That's not the name of it. But you still win five to three. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, I really thought right. that it was going to be uh, less close than it was. There we go. Fortunately, oh, there goes Jeff. for Jeff, he had a case of the Mondays. Steve had that uh, donut brain food. Damn straight. Made it all happen for you. Oh, the glazed. Yep. Uh, for the Deadpool movie, uh, when it came out, I asked, uh, what year the mid-2010s? Yeah. So, oh, it, my god. Yeah, yeah. It was 2016. So stupid. Yeah, Jeff I got that I one correct. Early 2010s. Um, Hugh Hefner's customized plane was called Big What? Is, is, it, is it Big Money? No, but you're close because that rhymes with it. Big Honey? Big Bunny. Big, you know, because Playboy bunnies and, you know, that sort uh, of thing. Yeah. I like oh, Hugh Bigums. Hefner. Yeah, I know. Like, oh, I was thinking of Howard Hughes. Oh, oh my gosh. No, that's like, the what? Spruce Goose. That was yeah, the, the, the no, big ass plane. I, I'm a moron. I'm like, Big Bunny. Why would he call? Oh, wait, but it's Hugh Hefner. Yeah. Uh, the type of insect that a firefly is. Anybody fashion a guess on this one? Uh, uh, no, it's a beetle. They're beetles. Oh. Huh. Yeah, Wouldn't I not. did not know that. I love Steve's oh. guesses as a uh, arachnid, which isn't an insect, and a marsupial, yeah. which a marsupial is definitely an insect. I don't know sure anything else. <laughs> I think you, get, you should check that. A marsupial, I think, is an insect. Right? Oh, which insects out. have pouches? <laughs> well, hey, you know what? I, where do you think they keep the light? I mean, uh, uh, Venera Nine was the first probe to land on what planet? Venus. Yes. Good Thank job. You. The V and the V there. And then also, BJ, I know you're going to know this because of Star Trek. Uh, the species yeah. of whale that's known for singing those long, complex songs. Sperm whale. No. No. Uh, it's oh, it's Gracie. All I know is the name was Gracie you know the, the whale. know the specific name of the whale? Is it a I, humpback, whale? of course. Yeah, Not a right. blue. It's a humpback whale. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so. One text says, I'm proud of Steve for knowing esophagus. Yeah, yeah, you did know that. I'll be honest. I was just naming a body part. <laughs> I was like, I'm hoping for the best. When you said yes, I was like, oh, good. I can't think of anything else. I was like, larynx? <laughs> Nice move, buddy. And there you got another one. There's a second uh, thing that's actually in the throat. Yeah. So 
Congrats on knowing well, not that. Tube hole. Third thing. Yeah, I was waiting for food tube, by the way. I really was. Food tube. <laughs> oh, well. The food tube. Congratulations on winning, Steve. Well, thank you very, very, very much. Good job, Steve. You know what? You are a true professional. Thank you, BJ. I appreciate you knowing that. <laughs> BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, There's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the Internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or or bankruptcy. Uh, There's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney. And right, my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy. My job is to help you to, to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, what benefits it's going to have for you, and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. 99.9 KISW. 50 years of KISW. Brought to you by Palace Law. W. The Rock of Seattle. A Lowe's employee has gone viral, all because she posted a video where she inhaled helium and then talked on the store's intercom, and, uh, well, people were digging what it sounded like. Can I get Patrick to customer service, please? Patrick to customer service. Thank you. <laughs> that is so stupid, but that yeah. would make my dad. If, if, if I was like, hey, Sally, suck on this helium. And then go talk on the intercom. Yeah, you know, uh, I never got to do that. We never had helium at any of the stores I worked at because I, I, I used to love to get on the intercom, and I definitely would have done that. I got to imagine there must have been like a birthday or some kind of a celebration that there was helium balloons there because I don't, I, I, I go to Lowe's quite frequently, and I don't recall seeing helium around there. Well, and somebody told me helium's kind of like expensive these days. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder, We're you know. Out of helium on Earth. What? Yeah. That's basically why the prices are going up higher. We're running out of helium. How do we make more helium? I think we have to go to another planet. Well, we are. Why don't we grab their helium? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe that's why we're colonizing Mars. <laughs> <laughs> we need your helium now. Right? I mean, come on, Elon. Get us the helium. Well, that is weird to think that if uh, that we may run out of helium and never have it again. Like, no more balloons. What are we going to do? I need to start. Get, how, what's the shelf life of helium? Mm. Is it forever? I want to make sure that my child gets to enjoy helium at some point in her life. You're going to be a helium hoarder? Is that going to be you? And you're going to be like the guys with yes. the Purell? Are you going to just sell it for a lot of ridiculous amount of money, gouge boy? Yeah, no, I'm not selling it. I'm saving it so that way Tatum can enjoy helium like like we have. I don't want her to be like, Daddy, tell me more about this thing called helium. I want her to experience helium. We're going to have a post-apocalyptic helium world where people are going to be just trashing neighborhoods and they'll finally get to Steve's. You've been hoarding all the helium, my kid, Mr. 5th, 6th, and 7th birthday because it's, of this. It's Steve's like, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. And it was like, we know you have it. Your voice is higher. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, like, babe, <laughs> babe, hide the helium inside the, the basement. Yeah. <laughs> they'll never know we have it. Oh, all right. Yeah, we're, 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 we're just as bright as that Lowe's employee. <laughs> It's the lukewarm topic of the day. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. So uh, there's a video going viral of a Lowe's employee that inhaled helium and then talked on the store's intercom. So uh, based on this, we want to know, man, uh, what is that one dumb thing that you've done to make your workday better? 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. Robert in Gig Harbor, you are on the rock. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, Robert, welcome to the show, buddy. What you got for us? Well, I was in the back of the store working as a as a manager for the installation crew, called to the front of the store on a different extension, told the guys up front that uh, the crew in the back were doing a great job, pretended I was the store owner, and told them to go and get coffee and donuts for the guys in the back and let them know that they were appreciated. Oh, so you... <laughs> 
So you call the big, you call the guys of the, the managers of the store to have them get you guys in the back donuts, pretending you were the big guy. That's correct. Did they ever catch on to you? No. Awesome. Oh man, we got to try that, Steve. I mean, we we never tried that action before. I mean, not that we really have a shortage of donuts, thanks to Suzanne today. Oh, my, more important question for you then. Yeah, if if you were going to get a box of donuts and you knew your coworker Steve loved the pink donut, would you take it from him before he was able to grab it? Good question. Oh, absolutely not. Thank yeah. you, Rev. Yeah. I Rev, didn't necessarily yeah. know how yeah. much you loved the pink donut. Oh. Everybody I was knows trying that. to figure out and decide which one looked good, and I went with the Homer the donut. One. Yeah, it's the best one. Wow. Yeah, it really yeah, was. It was really good. I always leave the pink donut for Steve. I mean, everybody you, knows PJ. that. Everybody knows that. Well, I mean, I'll try to remember next time. Oh, will you try? That, oh, I, I said see. I, attempts will be made. Wow, well, oh, we Steve. just need to get two pink donuts. We have two for the pink. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we got to text me, Jay. Oh, do we really? Well, All right. Well, uh, I don't want to know where that text is coming from <laughs> <laughs> since we have two in the pink donut. <laughs> That's the name of our donut shop. Oh, oh yes. Oh, okay. oh, we only oh, really? sell pink donuts. Okay. But you only get two at a time. And you know what? If Yeah, exactly. And if you come in and the two are already gone, you go, well, that stinks. Yes. And you call and two then, in the pink. And if you miss it, that stinks. Or then we have, you, you could get the, the pack of <laughs> Why the two pink doing? donuts and then the one chocolate donut. Oh, you can get the. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> All right, we need to take. And you know something? Right. Seriously, you can sell great coffees, but only, but you say, look, the coffee will come by the cup instead of by you know Ooh. it'll be in a cup. And then you get two donuts in one cup. But we no. promise not to sell any waffles. Okay, perfect. All right, this text comes from someone who used to work at a McDonald's when I was younger, and I would work the drive-through every now and then. I would uh, try out a new accent, and when they were at the box, and then when they came up to the face-to-face point, I'd have my regular voice. Or sometimes I would talk really loud into the box, just something different to keep the day moving. Oh wow! All right, I like that. Two zero six four two one rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. Again, the question is: What dumb thing have you done to make your workday better? I don't think this is dumb. I just think this is fun. Uh, back when uh, I worked at a restaurant and I worked a couple of brunches and if it was slow or busy or we just weren't in a good mood, I'd have the bartender make us all mimosas so we'd be drinking on the job. And it made us much lovelier servers. That's the most popular thing on the text line is drinking on the job. I mean, it relaxes you. Like, I just felt like I was in a better mood. I was better to my customers. My tips were better, I think. I don't know. I couldn't count when I was drinking. I guess, you know, if you're the bartender, you <laughs> really have to regulate that because you don't want to get your servers smashed. Oh, no. Because she, she, she was more drunk than the rest of us. Oh, okay. I guess that's not regulated. It sounds like then. an episode of Bar Rescue waiting to happen. <laughs> right? See, I hope it's just like more of a reality show where it's like a fun thing where it's like, yeah, we're going to follow these kooky people around that are drinking on the job instead of... You guys have a problem. Yeah, well, eventually it becomes a problem. I yeah. think that's the that's the issue. Everyone's having a good time until someone bangs the boss's wife or something weird. Whoa! That yeah, is like right in the middle of the restaurant. That would be really a problem, Steve. There, you're right. There yeah. was a one way to make the day go quicker. There yeah, was rumor that two bartenders did do that on the bar. Oh, really? The bar? They banged the on, boss's wife? No, no, no. On they, the bar? Two bartenders banged each other on the oh, actual bar okay, top yeah. at the okay, restaurant. Yeah. After hours? After yeah. hours. Oh, after hours. All right. Oh, see, now the, I think it. as a customer, you got to do it. Uh, yeah, like, I, that's a dinner and a show right there for right? me. Right? Oh, dear. No? Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll have to go to Mexico for that. <laughs> this 206 421 Rock text is at 77999. This might be my favorite text. I took a rock and I tossed it hard down the vent pipe of a porta potty. I got my buddy's ass blue. Called him Papa Smurf from then on. Oh. Oh man! <laughs> um, see, I'm never using a porta potty again. When are you using a porta potty? Oh, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do at a concert. Oh, is yeah. it really? No, I mean, <laughs> it, they, they, wait. They, I mean, depending on like if they like one place I like to go to, they, they they have construction going on, so they only have so many bathrooms, and they always go, "Oh, go out and use the construction porta potty." And I'm like, "No, I'm not going to do it because that's where I hang out with my friends, and they'll get, and they're hearing this show, they'll try it. Next thing you know, I'll be Smurf butt." <laughs> I don't need that. Do not need that in my life, I hope concerts come back. I want to make you a Smurf butt. Don't me make too. me a Smurf butt. A pain in the grass. Okay. Or yeah, it'll definitely be a pain in my grass. Mm. 206-421-ROCK. You can text us at 77999. Rev, what about you? Uh, for me, it would be basically, I mean, when I was working security, I would work overnights. And so usually either the swing or the graveyard shift, and there wouldn't be a whole lot going on. So I would make sure and I would bring in my... In- I would bring my desktop computer in and I would hook it up to the uh, other uh, equipment that was there, like, you know, the monitor and the keyboard and the mouse and all of that. And I would play WoW for eight hours a day. 
Oh, that's that that that, that big MMO World of Warcraft. Thing, Hell yeah. yeah, I play World of Warcraft, and uh, I just keep uh, pay tabs, you know, on pay attention to you know the 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 cameras and stuff, and make sure no one was coming in and leaving. No one was doing it. Like, there's no one coming in and like on the weekends. So I just play WoW. It, it worked out. Isn't that amazing that you could get, you have a job where you can play games all day? That's your job because nobody's paying attention because you're you're a security dude. I miss what you said. I was playing Sonic the Hedgehog. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice. Hey, somebody actually did do this. Uh, we talk about sex. Scott and Olympia. Hey, guys, I banged a coworker in the bathroom. Made the day way better. And I think this person must work at Walmart. They said, I once got on Walmart's intercom as an employee. and Or maybe they just did it just for fun as a customer and said, will the employee in the blue vest please come to the front? <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That's a good, I love that. I never thought of doing that. Oh, man, because we, we used to wear gold coats and gold, and we had gold aprons. So, I mean, that would have been a great, you know, will, will somebody in a, gold, in a gold vest please come up to the front? That would have been awesome. Oh, man, why didn't I think of that? Oh, this is an old school one, but uh, sharpen the pencils and throw them up at, uh, like darts at the ceiling. <laughs> oh, oh we yeah. used to do that in grade school. With yeah. the popcorn ceiling or, or whatever those really, whatever those ceilings are called. Yeah, those thin ones that just have like yeah. little panels. They already had holes in them when you think about it, some of them. So you really, man. Yeah, ours was not, it was school, not work, but we would wad up toilet paper with water and then throw it up at the ceiling and it would stick on the ceiling, but eventually it will come down. You just don't know when, but the phone was like, Waiting for somebody, one of your classmates, or it could be a coworker if you did it at work, uh, and them just being all pissed off because a wad of toilet paper just fell down on them. Oh, is it, does it dry up there and then kind of cracks and falls down and it's hard, or is no, it just wet and soft it's just and wet. hits them? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the thing. It's cr- the gravity finally, because, you know, it, wow, it, gravity so wins every time, and it's like, oh boy. The sword of Damocles sanging over my head. And it was clean toilet paper, so let's not get crazy. Oh, oh I, it was I clean. was hoping so. Yeah, well, well, I feel well. like I needed to let you guys know. It's not like we were that. Oh, did disgusting. you really? I feel like <laughs> I feel like you needed to let us know because it wasn't always clean toilet paper. But you wanted to know that while you were involved, it was. I can confirm it was never dirty when I was around. Oh, okay, well, fair enough. Two zero six four two one Rock, Texas at seven seven nine nine nine. What dumb thing have you done to make your workday better? Somebody says, uh, speaking of porta potties, uh, we used to always lock guys on the job site in the honey bucket. I would be so angry. Yeah. How do you lock them in the honey bucket? The outside, they have lock. They, they have the, the padlock. Oh, the there. actual padlocks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, for when like you leave the job site. That way, then it's not anyone can walk in on those during non-office hours. Which I think, by the way, is a travesty. If you have a bladder like myself now, at my, at my advanced age, they should all be free and open. Is it bad that when you said that, I thought you said they locked eyes, so I thought they were pooping with the, the doors open, staring oh. at each other? Is that where my brain went? Uh, that, yeah, that is a very interesting place for your brain to go, Vicky. I don't... Sorry. What is happening on that one? That's a romance novel I'm never reading. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> that's, yeah, Fifty Shades of Something. Ew. Yeah, we don't need to see that one. Somebody said they worked nights at Taco Bell 20 years ago, and, we, and I would bang a coworker in the bathroom almost every night. Okay. In the bathroom. Now, I worked in a lot of places that really no one is no one even approached me. We had women that worked in the supermarket. We had women that worked at TJ Maxx. Nobody ever there was nothing that was never even an offer on any table at all. Did they have like was it just them at work or did they have to come up with fun and creative like code words like hey I just dropped the chalupa in the bathroom or something I don't know like is there like a Oh you you get on the intercom <laughs> and you go with an employee in the blue vest please report to the bathroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> like hey Gladys we got to go and find that extra burrito. I don't know why her name's Gladys but <laughs> Gladys <laughs> yeah banging like a 50s diners chick well you know yeah. i do remember and i and, and somebody told me this because there wasn't and i you know i don't know if it was as obvious as department 69 but um the manager at one of our clothing stores that i worked at was indeed banging somebody as well as stealing money and they would actually have sex at work and somebody told me that they because i would say i don't know what department this is department 69 because they go with a with somebody from department 20 or for somebody from department 40 and that would you know be either mrs and juniors or that would be the men's department but there was one department i didn't know uh and i thought i used to think it was loss prevention because you know they didn't want to go hey we got somebody stealing something jimmy from loss prevention so they would just go hey jimmy from department 70 too, and you know, oh, something's going down. That's loss prevention. But then Department 69, I'm like, I don't know what this is. Is that a new loss prevention? And everybody laughed and they go, no, 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 that's the boss. He's banging he's banging the Mrs. and Juniors person. And I'm like, <laughs> like, how do I get into that department? Yeah. 
But how about they were so brazen they would page each other that way, Steve? They would like they uh, didn't care. Know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, she would say report to Department sixty nine, or he would say it, and you know, morons like me would be like, wow, that's this is happening, and I didn't even know. So uh, basically, I, I worked at a Puyallup McDonald's back in the nineties during high school, and this is the part that just completely floors me. There's a basement that would have a tanning bed down there. What? So we used to go down there and take turns having sex with each other. Wait, wait, wait. Why what is there a tanning bed at McDonald's? That's awesome. And are they having sex on it with it on? That's what I thought. We want our employees to be golden like our fries. Right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what weird ass tan lines. <laughs> Get down there. You're not golden enough. A tanning bed in a McDonald's basement. Wow. Yeah, what the heck? How did that even happen? happen? Oh, I'll tell you how it happened. When a boy <laughs> likes a girl, you know. No, I know that part, but like, <laughs> who was in charge of putting a tanning bed in the basement of a McDonald's? Oh, well, that probably, you know what? That's probably the employee that's not getting any. That would have been me. I'd be the guy. You want, what do you want a tanning bed? Oh, oh, cause you're getting some and I'm, that's great. And I have to, I have to install it. Who's got to clean it? Ew. See what I'm saying? That's probably me again. Okay, you know what? Grimace. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not working in any... <laughs> Poor Grimace. Oh, Grimace has to... All right. Well, everyone else has got a job. Yeah, well, the hamburger, so I'm not sure. Okay. DJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. If I call Travis, will I actually see him or someone who works for him? Absolutely. When you come in to see my to my office, uh, when you first call in, my staff will try to help you with with any basic questions that you have. Uh, I can give you a call back, uh, but they'll schedule usually try to schedule you for a, a pre consultation with me, the attorney. And I'll meet with you personally. We'll talk about your the basics of your case, and I'll take you through a question and answer session that usually la- an interview that usually lasts about thirty minutes, uh, where we'll get the basics of your financial situation. I can answer your questions, and we can talk about whether bankruptcy makes sense, your uh, your non bankruptcy options, uh, and how bankruptcy could affect you. What the process is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choose the right chapter.com. Thanks for listening.